Right. Uh, hello everyone. Uh, Stephanie Sterling here. I sorry. It's I've started rewatching Twin Peaks, and this time I've promised myself I'm going to finish it, uh, which means I have to be religiously glued to it. Otherwise, the ADHD will make me forget again, and I'll wander off and just rewatch all the Saw films again. Finally, got around to seeing Saw Rex. Quite good. The intestine rope. Uh, it was just a cavalcade of laughs. Hi, I'm Stephanie Sterling, and it's a little known fact about me that I am, in fact, an a trans. And as such, I have one or two opinions on JK Rowling. Now, I've expressed these opinions, uh, backed up by facts, in fact, uh, in a previous video, one that went out earlier this year called Hogwarts, A Legacy of Hate, and there was a spirited response, uh, a lot of positive response, and a lot of people telling me to shut my damn mouth because it doesn't matter. Now that's an interesting thing what happened, cause the wizard game did not get any nominations for the game advertisements, uh, which is coming soon. Now, <laughs> look. Maybe the wizard game wasn't very good. <laughs> fans, or at least people claiming to be fans who totally don't have an ulterior motive, are up in arms over the fact that Hobgort's Leg of Lamb is up for a grand total of zero. Awards at this year's The Game Advertisements, hosted by friend of Hideo Kojima, Jeff Keighley. It's up for zero awards because it received zero nods in zero categories for a grand total of zero nominations, ensuring it'll have zero presents at the Game Awards. I'm told this matters greatly, which is weird because earlier this year when I explained in detail the inherent problem of supporting a game that in turn supports the figurehead of a fascist movement who repeatedly and explicitly encourages harmful rhetoric and actions against trans people in particular and marginalised groups in general, do you know what I was told? Repeatedly and often viciously. It doesn't matter. It's just a video game. Now, all of a sudden, just a video game becomes a matter of virulent outrage because it's not getting any pointless little head pets at a vapid festival of industrial autofellatio in which the so-called awards take a distant back seat to commercials for yet more video games, 90% of which will just be as meaningless and forgettable as the wizard game so many people are pretending to care about, and they are pretending. Look, I'm sure a few gullible hairy squatter fans are genuinely swept up in the manufactured anger and are sad that the children's game based on a children's book written by a spiteful transphobe didn't get a little trophy at a glorified press conference. But considering how many people are blaming this on wokeness and fear of upsetting the liberals, as if it's the liberals that do things like insurrections, I think we can pretty safely say that this backlash is politically motivated. And yes, for all their talk about keeping politics politics out of games, the self-styled capital G gamers and the media grifters who encourage their behaviour are more forceful about pushing a political agenda than anyone else, specifically the politics that cishet white male in a video game equals normal and everything else is pandering and forced diversity. Now these are the same people who rail against diversity because they think the world should be a meritocracy. Many is the time I've seen the phrase diversity hire thrown around whenever a woman, queer person or person of colour is seen in a prominent position at a company, and indeed when the overwhelming number of cishet white men in positions of power in the game industry is criticised, gamer bros will argue that maybe, just maybe, it means there are simply more cishet white men who are better at the job and we shouldn't include marginalised people just for the sake of satisfying a demographic. So, the wizard game. You already see where the next sarcastic diatribe is going, right? Yeah. We're going to do it anyway because it's going to be delicious. I think the Game Awards should be a meritocracy that rather than nominate games just to tick boxes on a diversity sheet or keep certain demographics happy, it should really come down to whether or not those games nominated are the best. Just because some vocal minority might get upset about a lack of inclusivity, that doesn't mean we should pander to them by dishing out awards to games that aren't good enough to deserve it, you know, like Pogwarts Legolas, which 
isn't good enough to be nominated, because even though I said this diatribe was sarcastic, it really just describes how the award process goes. Look, I've never been one of the nominators for the game ads, but I know people who have, and let me tell you that there's no conspiracy, they just pick the games they like. There's no collusion, there can't even be any fear of reprisal, as some reckon would occur if nominators dared to give a nod to Slop Warp's heresy. The process is not only completely anonymous, but it includes so many people across so many media outlets that narrowing down the happy plopper fans would be fucking next to impossible, or at the very least, way too much hard work for people who don't care, which is almost fucking everybody, and let's face it, that's why the game never got any nominations nominations because people cared so little they forgot it fucking existed. You took everything from me. I don't even know who you are. It wasn't good enough to remember. Are you really gonna sit there and try and make the legitimate case that it's a game of the year contender? Come the fuck on. And the idea that press outlets are terrified of trans people is fucking laughable to begin with. Pretty much every game publication already publicly supported Hobblos blah 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 by giving it press attention, reviewing it, sometimes even writing hand-wringing apologia and pathetic equivocations to justify the decision to do so. And then, they moved on. Because most of them weren't trans and didn't know trans people, and it didn't affect them one way or another. They didn't care, and they don't care now. See, the game adverts don't give a shit. IGN doesn't give a shit. Most of the population of every nation doesn't give a shit. The only people for which this game has any meaning left are people like me, and the people opposed to people like me. And to that latter group I say, it's just you and me here bruh. And the world at large pretty much decided none of this matters. Which should please you, since, you know, y'all screamed at me a few months ago precisely how none of this matters. Because it's just a video game and I need to stop making everything political. Of course, you said it with a huge number of malicious slurs and threats, but y'all are doing that right now because I said I didn't like Alan Wake 2 of all things, so what's new? It's not even me saying the game is mid. Common consensus has decided that it's fucking mid. I'm talking about the, the wizard game, not Alan Wake 2. Just a basic licensed game that does very little of interest. You know, the kind of licensed tie-in crap that never gets nominated for an award, even in a dry year, let alone a year with Baldur's Gate 3 in it. The only people who bought it were fans of Harpy Spotter and fans of Transphobia, and don't tell me the latter didn't do it. I saw how many so-called gamers excitedly promised to buy the borderline asset flip Stray Souls the moment they found out its director was a racist queerphobe. I know how easy it is to separate you moronic dipshits from your money when you think buying a bad product will trigger someone, and a bunch of you directly told me you were gonna buy Pig Shart heartily specifically because of my video explaining how it benefited transphobe, so, you know, you bang to rights, mate. Hope you didn't feel too burned by buying a bargain basement movie tie-in that you all forgot about before now. I've returned to the point that this doesn't matter multiple times because it truly was, among the slurs and threats, the thing angry gamers yelled at me more than anything else when I explained, in comprehensive detail, how supporting the wizard game was harmful. Ultimately, if you were among the throng telling me and others that it was a simple, unassuming video game that had no real meaning or impact and that I should have ignored it, you really have no valid reason for shitting your diaper over something as many times more inconsequential as said meaningless game not getting a meaningless nomination for a meaningless award. There are few things less important than the awards of the Game Awards. Not even the Game Awards prioritises the actual awards at the Game Awards. That is how low the stakes are. Not even the thing named after the awards treats the awards like the most important element of the awards. And you're upset about that? Really? I mean, caring enough about the game adverts to ever be upset about them at all has always struck me as particularly sad, but when you're crying because a run-of-the-mill licensed game didn't get a token nomination, it's honestly just tragic. Tragic.
I'm not in the award show, cause nobody wants to play Hogwarts no more, they want Spidey and Balder. Uh, yeah, I'm a mid game, but better than the Kong Blunder. I think that puts me next to Mario Wonder, you know you owe me for all the bros who now owe me their opinions are gold, so honor them only. Not the people who don't use the game curating as a way to stick it to all the gays they're hating. I mean, come on, I wasn't openly racist, but you're ditching me like I'm the motherfucking escapist. I know that you're counting nominations, but I should get a cookie for participation. So the powers that be just don't agree that old legacy's a nominee. I know it was forgotten by a quarter three, but it still seems wrong to disclude me. So would you kindly give me some props? Fuck that, nominate me, or you're getting doxxed to get ready to listen to some angry howling. I'm at mine, not the people yelling, Fuck you, Rowling! Well, this looks like you only got relief and nostalgia and anti wokery and I look a little bit of trans misogyny, I guess that will be my legacy Because this mid-game just can't compete with the juggernauts of 2023 Manufacturing a little controversy, I guess that will be my legacy Of course, we can point out the hypocrisy but the hypocrisy is part of the point. The people I'm addressing and having fun addressing uh, don't really care, they don't really have any principles because their entire ideology is based around hatred and exclusion and they have no higher purpose than that. It's not an argument you can win, uh, in fact. It's why I never try and uh, engage these people in the theater of ideas. It's why all of the debate me bros have never got me to debate them, bro. Because when you have no actual stake in the game you're playing, you can't lose. It doesn't matter if people point out you're a hypocrite. It doesn't matter if people point out that you're illogical, irrational, and you're coming off as a complete and total dumbass. These people don't care. They only want to express their contempt. It's why they're willing to waste their money. I can make fun out of bigots for buying stray souls, but to them, in their little heads, they sent a message. A message that they hate the people that the director of that game hates. And to them, that was money well spent. Maybe they never even tried the game. I mean, I wouldn't recommend it to anyone because it really is that shit. They bought uh, pretty much a game that's on the cusp of an asset flip, but it doesn't matter because they think they made a point. It's why people still tell me, you'll never be a woman, even though being trans femme and non-binary is quite different from being a woman. Uh, it doesn't matter to them. They are dolls with pull strings repeating the same quotes over and over. They get a kick out of it and they don't care what you've got to say in return. Still gonna say it though, because, well, I'm right and they're wrong. Thank God for me.